Hello lovely human beings, it's Loretta with Sparrowhawker Designs. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, so today I am going to show you how I am putting the back on the slow stitch project. Uh, this is part of, um, there's a, there's my needle. <laughs> Uh, I was invited to do this open slow stitch collaboration for today on Saturday where everybody uploads a video and then um, uh, puts a hashtag and um, a link to Susan's channel. So this is for Susan Hiles Art here on YouTube and it's a open slow stitch collaboration for today. Uh, so this is the slow stitch project I've been working on or I worked on um, last year and it's been finished since uh, I don't know April March or April uh, but I, I, I the blocks were finished but I hadn't put it together and since I have always have so many people ask me what I what I do with the blocks once I get them finished I thought I would show you so I there are six of them and I sewed them together at their seams here whoops all along there and then I put a backing on it just any piece of fabric that you want and then I you can see I have quilted in the ditch for um, for these blocks and this one I also did some quilting around the heart and that kind of thing and it's a very loose open quilting this is not um, 13 stitches to the inch and all that kind of stuff yes <laughs> because I'm not entering this in a contest I just wanted to hang on my wall so um, so yeah, so I will show you. It's very, very simple. In addition to it going in the ditch, I'm also kind of, uh, like I said, going around some of the other pieces. And you can't even see where I've done it. But, <clears throat> so over here, I thought I would do a little stitch along this seam binding here. Or not seam binding, um whatever that thing's called. The thing that you find on the edge of fa fabrics. Um, a selvage. Selvage, that's it. Anyway. So yeah, so you just stitch, stitch like that. You can see I put it in. I just, just take a little bite of fabric and then just come right back out. I just use my nails to push everything. You can use a, a thimble if you want. Um, so this is, I'm using a size 10 John James quilting needle with just regular, and you do have to be careful because you're going to get your thread hooked on everything you've got on your quilt <laughs> or on your piece. Um, so I'm just going to rest that there because I'm going to go back and do more stitching. Uh, I'm using John James size 10 quilting needles and just a regular Gutermann's cotton that just kind of blends in with that stuff so you don't really see it. When I do use a needle, or when I do use a thimble, like when I do normal quilting, I use the I, I use one of these because I can't stand just the, the metal thimble thing that they drive me crazy. Uh, anyway, but I was going to show you another way to... Uh, Another way that you can get your backing attached to your top. Um, there are there are some spray adhesives that I have seen people use where they will, you know, they spray the back of it and then they put their thing on it, but I don't know. I, I think that's really only good for me personally. I, I think I could only get that to work on... Um, a very small project. If I had to go spraying a whole quilt, I don't think that would, the back of it, I don't think that would work. Not to mention, um, I, I've been told by a couple of other crazy quilters that um, sometimes they discolor your fabrics. So, I don't know. I I would either do like I'm doing here with this uh, quilting stitch, or if I can get my needle threaded, I will show you another. <laughs> Another way that I can that you can do this, you can do what they call um, just like a tacking stitch. So I have taken just an embroidery needle with embroidery thread, 
and um, I'm not going to tie a knot in it. And I'm going to come up, I'm just going to pick some place random, right, I'll just say right there. And I'm doing it kind of in a color you can see. If you didn't want this to see, you could, you know, do it accordingly. And so I'm going to, so you can see this right here, right? Then you just go back down and take another little tiny stitch. And then you come over here. And then you tie this in a knot. And then you move on and do it again. And you can do it every inch or so. And then, so you'll have all these little ties and tags on the back of your quilt, but you can, all you're going to have is this little bitty stitch right there. And if, as long as you're doing it in coordinating colors and stuff, it's going to look like part of your stitching. <laughs> it's not even going to look like it's there to keep your quilt together, you know, and you could even do a combination of both. So I'm going to cut this off because this is not what I'm doing, but I just wanted to show you, um, I don't know where my good little scissors are. These are my big old paper scissors, <laughs> but I just wanted to show you like how the two ways that I was, um, using to get, uh, the backing onto the fabric or onto the top. So when I did these blocks, um, I did them on a batting. You can also use felt. Um, and then, so then when you do go to either quilt it or tack it to the back, um, you've already, you've already got your, your batting and everything. You don't need to do anything else. It's that simple. Now, probably what I will do with this whenever I get done with the quilting part, or if I do decide to go in and tack it as well, uh, I'm going to put a binding around the edge because you want to finish your edges. Unless you don't. I mean, you might do something really rustic and raw where you don't want the edges uh, finished. Um, I do want my edges finished, though, because my stuff keeps unraveling otherwise. But um, uh, that might be part of the aesthetic that you want. So if you do want to finish your edges, you can either make a binding and sew it on separate, which that's a whole other thing that I really don't really have the room to even show you how to do. So I, and I hate doing regular bindings. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I do do them, but I hate them. Uh, but on this, I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do like my grandmother used to do with her quilts. And that is where you cut your backing a little bit bigger than what you need. And then you're going to take this and fold it. And then you're going to fold it again so that you have this nice, beautiful finished edge there. And then you can pin it or you can use these little thingies. Um, do one side at a time and then I will whip stitch this down across the edge there. Now, since I have buttons that come up pretty close here, I will have to make sure when I do this that I get this tucked under my buttons. And yes, I will be losing some of my stitches. Uh, this is why it's kind of important whenever, um, I think I've mentioned in some of my other videos, um, to make sure you give yourself enough room around the edge of your blocks so that when you sew them together, you don't have um, buttons or beads or sequins in the way um, and also so that you don't lose something really important, like if it, you know, you would, <laughs> it would be awful if this was all the way to the edge, and then, so then when you sewed them together, <laughs> you'd lose half of your yo-yos, which is actually the problem I ran into on, um, the slow stitch piece that I, for my collaboration with the other, uh, slow stitch ladies that I did last year was there were at least two of the blocks where they really did have, um, stuff all the way to the edge. And so there was no way to sew the blocks together. So I, uh, used Velcro and just, um, hung them on a piece of quilted material so that I wouldn't lose any of their work to, uh, to a seam allowance, you know, to a bind, you know, to, to, to the stitching, 
So, anyway, so this is the <clears throat> six blocks put together. And I can't wait to get this one finished. This one's going in my living room, I think. I don't know. I might put it in my sewing room. Um, I'm kind of running out of wall space, actually, in my sewing room. So, <laughs> so I hope you can see all that. Anyway, yep, that's them all sewed together. I have to, I have to tell you, this is one of my most favorite things I've ever made. Um, I just love the whole aesthetic of it. Um, and it's also sentimental because there are items in here that came from my grandmother and from another stitcher that I know um, who passed away. And yeah, so anyway. All right, so that's how I get my slow stitch top to my slow stitch back. And I will show you this once the binding is all done and everything's done. I'll show you, but I just wanted to come on and show you how I'm doing this for the... Um, open slow stitch collaboration so there you go guys all right thanks for stopping by bye bye